Today we're going to be looking at some rare, obscure, and I dare say unique movie related memorabilia. I've just dug out some of my favourites and uh, yeah, let's just get straight into it, let's have a look. But here at first glance this might be, oh well done, you've got a signed Darth Vader figure, which uh, I know these uh, aren't probably that rare. But this is a David Prowse signed Darth Vader, but it's Revenge of the Sith, which to me that is spectacularly awesome. I mean, when I went to see David Prowse it was kind of cool because I saw three famous people in one. I saw the Green Cross Code Man, that bloke from Clockwork Orange and Darth Vader. My dad's always adamant that we saw uh, Darth Vader outside a toy shop once in Stoke on Trent, but I didn't have the heart telling him, it was just uh, some bloke. I mean, he probably wasn't David Prowse, but you know, you never know. Uh, maybe he was right, never, never doubt your father. That's what they say, isn't it, or something? But uh, remember as well, when he was making Freddy vs Jason, for years and years, we were like, oh, it's being made, it's being made. And, and when I very first saw this, it was in, um, I got it from a shop called Fantasy World, which was um, a local shop, a local chain of stores uh, in Staffordshire. There was another world in Fantasy World, and then they sort of got merged into Forbidden Planet. But this is a Peter Briggs screenplay for Freddy vs. Jason. And I think uh, there was about 10 screenplays, but I don't know why this one got released uh, so you could buy it. But uh, it's got like Wes Craven as a character, and they mentioning like the cult of Freddy and all this, and it's set in like you know, the 1400s and things like that. Of course, it's not been read. I mean, I've read the first few pages, so uh, I'm sure uh, anybody who's read that, you know, sort of thing might be worth sort of uh, leaving a bit of feedback or for your Peter Briggs, tell me uh, uh, how you did it. That could be cool. This is a cool item here. And at first glance, it might be, uh, remember those toys in the 70s where they uh, get girls become hairdressers by having these Barbie dolls where you could do the hair. It looks like a, a boy's version of one of them or a cool uh, hat stand. This is a bonus related film item. It's a cap to promote the Ills Have Eyes remake. And you can, you know, wear it on your head or you know, that kind of stuff. But it was released to just people who were at cinemas. Well, released, I say given to. Yeah, but this is uh, my ape. I called him Seamus from the uh, Tim Burton Planet of the Apes movie. But he's, he looks pretty cool. He's got, you know, like I said, the hair is amazing. You can do some loads of different styles. Actually, that's kind of just kind of a boy's version of one of those toys. He's got working zips, but the uh, pièce de résistance is uh, is the all the films go in there. It's like a fold-out little box. That number is uh, six thousand seven hundred seventy-six. And up until Rise, right, yeah, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. This had everything Planet of the Apes that you could ever get. You got the Tim Burton film, the animated series, two series of the TV series. Like I say, all the movies, making of documentaries, but uh, CMOS can go over there for a little bit. Actually, this is a cool item as well. This is, it. I remember Tarantino saying actually, that if you collect like DVDs and videos, you're basically like a normal person. Then if you collect like laser discs, that's like doing weed and stuff like that. They said if you collect 35mm prints, it's like being a crack crack addict. Well here is one reel to Alien Resurrection. But look at this, try to be pretty careful with it. Look at this, it's 35mm. Can you believe that what's incredible about this though, that like when you go see a film at the cinema though, that just this, oh, oh, this is kind of, I got this as a bit nuts. But uh, yeah, imagine how much of this just thousands and thousands of feet goes through the camera, and now it's just it's all ones and zeros. But you know, that's people didn't want that, did they? You know, they wanted it all, wanted it all like 4K, didn't they? And 8K and 1 to 8K. You know, what? But this is from an actual video shop. I don't know how much I'll be able to show this on camera, but it was a uh, a banner to promote, a uh, Bruce Banner, a uh, banner to promote Cinderella 2, the Disney film. And let's um, get it out of its container here. But yeah, there's uh, got a lot of stuff going on there. Ah, oh, I'm Prince Charming! No, there's, I don't know, that's what it sounds like, I'm not sure. There's, uh, you know, I don't know if I've ever, apart from when I very first had it, actually unravels it all the way through. I can't remember who actually, I can't remember how big it is. Yeah. 
I don't know why I've got this, I've got a problem. That's just an actual video shop just down the street, so the good times when that was there. You used to get things like um, Ghosts of Mars and things like that. Brought it region one from that shop. It was a really cool shop though because um, you had a dog behind the counter and it was always one of them dogs. I always struggle to remember which one it is. It was either a Doberman or a Rottweiler. And I know one, one of them got like a bit of a fatter face, but he used to, he, I think it was the Rottweiler used to like sit up on the counter and the guy who worked in the shop next door she had a shop that sold like vacuum cleaners and stuff like that and he used to come in and when his shop was not busy we'd all just talk about movies and stuff like that that was a really cool shop but uh, this is probably one of my favourite collectibles or just favourite things I've ever owned in my entire life but uh, Tommy Morrison uh, before he passed away did a convention in Birmingham, England and uh, me and my dad went down it was like a bit like the David Prowse thing. It was a triple whammy. I was going to see a heavyweight champion of the world. I could have been a contender. I guess he was. Um, I saw the bloke from Rocky Five who punches Paulie in the face. In the place, gave me the worst thing when you get punched in the face. But uh, when the uh, pinball machine wasn't working, and um, yeah, so I saw like you know, this heavyweight champion of the world, and I took a couple of things with me. Get signed. I took this uh, Rocky figure. And he was charging about 15, 16 quid for an autograph, something like that. It wasn't very much, but I could only afford to get one thing signed. So I, I made an executive decision and I decided to get this video signed. And I'm pretty sure, like when I'm saying some of these items must be one of a kind, unique items. But this video is like a compilation of his best fights. And at the very end of the video, there's like a 10, 15 minute section of like a making of Rocky V. Or when I say on the tape, if uh, Columbo Light Research viewers will notice that there is no tape in here, just uh, some old newspaper cuttings. But when Tommy Morrison saw this tape, he was like, oh, what, what, what's this tape? I've never seen this tape before. And this was from good old Pound Stretcher, one of my favorite local shops that used to have all this cool rare stuff in there, like black hole toys and Star Trek the Motion Picture figs and stuff like that. But I, I've heard loads of people have been to conventions and I've never heard anybody say this before. But Tommy Morrison, who was with his girlfriend at the time, Lisa, were like, oh, what is this, what is this? And they borrowed this actual cassette. But because I got nothing else to get, you know, like I really wanted to get this because I think I'd give my dad the bag with uh, my stuff and so I'd only got this with me. And so he signed this, but I gave him the tape. Yeah, and I uh, just covered the address up a little bit there. But he actually, they wrote down their address, home phone number, email address and things like that. And this is so cool, and uh, yeah, you lent the tape and never got it back. Whew, tell you what, people just dying, just ignorant ones. No, you're kidding, rest in peace, Tommy Morrison, you're awesome. One of the best jabs in, uh, I think I said in rock, in uh, boxing, what do they call it nowadays? Uh, but I'll just go to this, just behind me. From that video where I got the uh, Cinderella 2 banner from, I remember one day, I was a big Stallone fan, so when you get this uh, standee in there, and it's a uh, like a triangle shaped, uh, if you look at it from above, standee, and on the back, I think it advertises a Danny DeVito and Gene Atman film called Heist. Not very often you those two names together, and uh, Jeepers Creepers as well. Well, yeah, it's advertising uh, the Stallone remake of a remake of Get Carter, and there's the Michael Caine version, and there's the Michael Caine, and the Michael Caine is in this one as well. Uh, but it's a super cool item, and when I say about like rare, one of a kind things like that, Tommy Morrison, like handwritten and everything, notes and everything like that, that must be almost unique. And how many of these standees are still knocking around? I think just worthy of a quick mention though. Back in the good old days of Region One DVDs, but can you remember when you could sell a DVD for twenty four ninety nine, ladies and gentlemen? And as always, it wouldn't be. Um, it wouldn't be one of my collectibles if it didn't have some random piece of paper in here. I had a bet on a horse once called Get Carter. That's the one of previous couple of races. I don't think it won, it's probably glue now. It's probably, uh, probably, yeah, it's probably dead. <laughs> That's depressing, isn't it? It's like art accent, never ending story. Tell you what, if you don't cry at that scene, you're superhuman. But talk about people that don't cry, what? Uh, no, uh, this is probably, like the Tommy Morrison thing's cool, this is the next step up 
This is a Kane Odder autograph. This very little thing was put together to, with, by Kane Odder's own fair hands, I was told. But that wasn't cool enough in and of itself. There is a piece of the Jason costume from Friday the 13th part nine, very known as Jason Goes to Hell, the final Friday. And uh, it's number 70 out of 100. It says a piece of the actual shirt worn by Kane Odder is Jason in the movie Jason Goes to Hell. So one day if there's uh, some kind of nuclear war or if I just uh, rub it on me enough, maybe I'll get Kane Odder type superpowers and I can go around and do whatever Kane Odder does. I don't know, just go around and have a cup of tea or something. But as uh, I'm sure Kane Odder would say, keep it locked. They're here, Jason. Find them. Bring them to Mommy.